वेलकम टू इंग्लिश योगी यूट्यूब चैनल फॉर लर्निंग द बेसिक्स ऑफ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एंड ग्रामर इन द प्रेजेंट वीडियो वी विल टॉक एंड डिस्कस प्रोनाउन एंड वी नो दैट इट इज अ पार्ट्स ऑफ स्पीच वी विल लर्न द कंसेप्ट टाइप्स रूल्स एंड एग्जांपल्स ऑफ प्रोनाउन इन द प्रेजेंट वीडियो इफ यू आर न्यू टू द चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू इट वी ऑल नो दैट एवरी सेंटेंस दैट वी स्पीक एंड राइट इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज हैज वर्ड्स एंड एवरी वर्ड्स हैज रोल इन अ सेंटेंस so according to that perspective we call it parts of speech and there are eight parts of speech in the english language they are noun pronoun adjective verb adverb preposition conjunction and interjection in the present video we focus our focus will be on pronoun as we have already discussed the concept and types of noun in one of our video and i have given the link in the description so coming to the point what is exactly pronoun is so the answer of this question is that pronoun is a such a word that is used to replace or to substitute a noun so why we replace our substitute nouns so we replace nouns and we use pronouns to avoid monotony of in the sentence so every pronoun can be understood in the context it means that pronoun has a reference in the sentence so thus commonly there are eight kinds of pronoun we have to study and that we will study in the video so they are personal pronoun demonstrative pronoun interrogative pronoun distributive pronoun possessive pronoun relative pronoun reflexive pronoun and indefinite pronoun the first pronoun is personal pronoun a personal pronoun is a pronoun that is related mainly to a particular person when do we use this personal pronoun then the first point is that it is used to refer a person in the first example he is a student the word he is used to refer a person the second point is that it is a substitute for the proper noun we can tell you from the example given here john is a student and he goes regularly to the college so to substitute john in the second sentence the word he is used and we know that he is personal pronoun so these personal pronouns can be understood by studying their types so the types of pronouns are first person pronoun second person pronoun and third person pronoun and we know all these things so from the first example we can see the first person pronoun is i and we the second person pronoun is you and the third person pronoun is he she it and they the most point the one of the most important point that we have to remember is that the personal pronoun is the subject of the sentence as we can tally this rule from all two example given here he is the subject in the sentence john is also we can say though it is what the noun it is the subject similarly the he goes to the college that he is here subject in the sentence we can tally the personal pronoun is the subject of the sentence the next type of pronoun is the demonstrative pronoun the word demonstrative itself is a meaningful to understand the meaning of the type of demonstrative pronoun so demonstrative pronoun is used to talk about a specific thing or person demonstrative pronouns point to the object they are replacing and can stand alone and function as a noun for example again we have to remember that i have made one video on this topic and if you want to get more details about this and that this and those so you can click in the description and you will find the videos link so the main point that we have to remember these demonstrative pronouns are used to show the direction time and distance and we know that this that these two words are singular these and those these two words are plural the next type of pronoun is an interrogative pronoun so what is interrogative pronoun an interrogative pronoun is a pronoun used to ask a question we know that this interrogative pronoun starts with a wh type word and end in question mark so what is used to ask about things and which is used to show choice among two i have given here a chart so we can see what is used for the things which is used for the things on people and who whom and who's are used for the people for example one sentence is there what is your result so what is used here to show the things and that what in the sentence is a interrogative pronoun similarly the second example is there which is your favorite subject the word which is used for the thing and lastly the third example is here who pass in the exam so who is here interrogative pronoun and used for a person so these are the types of interrogative pronoun the next type is a distributive pronoun so what is distributive pronoun 
so it is a pronoun that considers the members mentioned in the word separately and they are each either and neither for example in the first example each student passes in the examination so the word each is used here as a demonstrative pronoun and the meaning of each means a separate student similarly the second example is there the third example is there so what we have to understand from the distributive pronoun the first thing that we have to remember there are three distributive pronoun they are each neither and either and what we have to remember is that distributive pronoun is a singular and according to the rule that we have to use the singular verb with the distributive pronoun the next type of pronoun is possessive pronoun and we use this type of pronoun to show ownership or a property for example mine yours his hers ours and theirs so these are the examples of possessive pronoun so we used to show the ownership of something in the first example we can see these papers are mine so the second example is the book is yours the book is his the bike is hers this college is ours and this house is there so these are the words that all the words show ownership and property of something the next type of pronoun is relative pronoun a relative pronoun is a subordinate clause and to understand it we have to say or we can say easily that it is a relative clause and what is relative clause then we know that it is a dependent clause it means that it has a subject and verb but does not complete the meaning in a sentence that is what the dependent clause or we can say the subordinate clause or we can say relative clause relative clause subordinate clause and dependent clause it means that these are the sentences and subject having the we can say the verb but does not complete the meaning in the sentence so we have to remember that almost all the relative pronoun is the subject of the relative clause see the example the word which here given in the sentence for example this is the college which john always appreciates see it so the word which is relative pronoun and it is a subject in the sentence so the word whom who whom uh, again what whose and that these are the relative pronoun that is also used the word that is also used sometime as a relative pronoun in the english language the next type of pronoun is reflexive pronoun and it indicates the person who implements the action of the verb that is the reflexive pronoun we make this type of pronoun by adding self or selves and we know that these are the suffixes so when we do something for ourselves on that time we have to use this type of reflexive pronoun in the example given here my son is learning english language himself so that my son is doing something learning of english language on his own that's why we have used the word himself and we use this reflex we can say the reflexive pronoun to give emphasis on the particular activity for example i myself did it and thirdly the third rule that we have to remember about the reflexive pronoun is that in that reflexive pronoun the subject and the object of a sentence used to be the same for example they injured themselves during the bike race so the subject is they and we can say the object themselves is the same one so we can say reflexive pronoun are used to show that the action of the verb is done by the recipient of the action means the subject and object are interconnected and for the better understanding i have given here a chart and we know that these are the reflexive pronoun himself herself itself myself yourself oneself so these are the singular reflexive pronoun yourself themself and ourselves are the plural pronoun reflexive pronoun next one is indefinite pronoun so what is the indefinite pronoun we use indefinite pronoun to find out or to give the idea about unidentified person the examples of unidentified we can say person can be understood by observing these words anyone anybody someone somebody no one nobody everyone everybody so these are the pronoun these are the indefinite pronoun and whenever we use this type of pronoun so we do not get any idea because the person they are mentioned is completely unidentified for example someone has done this so we don't know who has done this someone has done this so that's why it is a unidentified person similarly indefinite pronouns are used to show non specific objects 
For example, the example is given here, something should be done and we know what should be done. So that's why it is not specific and non, we can say the specific objects can be used here by using anything, nothing, everything and something. Indefinite pronouns are also used to give meaning to the sentence by using non-specific words for the places. For example, we should go somewhere on holiday. Somewhere, anywhere, nowhere, these are the examples of indefinite pronoun used for the places. And there are certain examples of indefinite pronoun both, few, fewer, many, others and several. So these are also the examples of indefinite pronoun. So, putting into very simple language, indefinite pronouns means such a words, we can say the pronouns which are used for unidentified person, for non-specific objects and non-specific places. So, to sum up, there are commonly eight types of pronoun. They are personal, demonstrative, interrogative, distributive, possessive, relative, reflexive and indefinite. And we have also studied the types with the example. Personal pronoun for person. Demonstrative for non for direction, interrogative for question, distributive for which, possessive for ownership, uh, relative, it is a cause we have, clause we have also discussed this, reflexive to give emphasis and indefinite means for the unidentified place, person or thing. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video and its content, please like, comment, share and subscribe.